All right. Welcome back. Uh, so let's pick up from where we stopped. We're looking at uh, a church where people are of one heart and one mind. So teach people to be kingdom minded and do things with pure motives, celebrate each other's success, work together as teams. Now, how do I do this? How do I work together as a team? How do I have pure motives? All of this. A lot of it depends on the leader. Now, as a leader, I must be, I must not be insecure about my church, about my identity, about my ministry. I must not be insecure. I must know that, okay, the ministry that I'm doing is God-given. And there will be times people will like it, people may not like it, people will come, people will look out for other churches. I must not be insecure. So I must be rooted in God's word and what he says about me, right? We, we must not put people down. We must not be divisive in nature. We must not manipulate each other. So a lot of what we do as a leader will come down to the leadership team and then eventually to the congregation, right? So walk in integrity, walk in honor, learn how to, uh, you know, there, there will be things that you have to undo Learn to walk with clean hearts, be of good spirit um, through the ups and downs. Be, you know, look to God, gain strength from God. There will be times we will fall down, rise up again, right, and continue what God is going to, God is doing. Right? Remember that people are looking at you and learning from you. Yes or no? It's a leader. See, we look at Jesus, we try to learn from Jesus. We, we are learning from Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. But there are leaders around us, people will watch, people will learn, right? So a lot of it, uh, when it comes to one heart and one mind, a lot of it, uh, it depends on the leader itself. So next one, a church that is equipping and releasing people into their God-appointed function. Let's read Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Ephesians 4, 11, 12. Just read it from your books itself. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah. So this verse is very common to us. For God himself, the Lord Jesus himself, gave some to be apostles, prophets. So the fivefold ministry is given by God. And so we as believers must learn to encourage people to begin to flow or function in any of these. Now, sometimes we don't know what I see. When I got into ministry, I don't know. People used to ask me, hey, what is your calling? I said, I don't know. Why? Because I was leading worship. I was preaching also. Then I was doing all kinds of things. I was doing evangelism also. So I didn't know. I really didn't know what my calling is. Even now, people ask me. I say, Sometimes I still don't know. It's not wrong. But here's the thing. The church's responsibility is to equip the saints to fulfill their God-given function. Right? Now, how do I do that? You see these stages here. From a new believer, right? for example, a person comes into church, he becomes a believer. He's a new believer. So you disciple them. How do we disciple them? Some of the things we do in APC is we help them to go through the foundations course. Right? Uh, they made a new decision. We help them to go through the foundations course. We also, um, you know, uh, encourage them to, you know, take up one or two courses from Bible College. Then we very importantly encourage them to continue to come every Sunday, be connected to a local church. Then we try to connect them to a life group uh, where they have fellowship. Then we try to connect them to volunteer teams. So we have many opportunities that way. Right? A new believer, we disciple them. Then. We ask them to minister. So after maybe five years, say, okay, this person was a new believer. Five years he's been serving with us, you know, in many teams. So let me give him an opportunity to teach in missions. We we'll send him, okay, go teach three three topics in missions. In you know, in probably any topic, healing and deliverance or uh, faith, any topic. So what's happening? 
he's gone from new believer he has been discipled and now he's preaching right or ministering the word or then we can ask him hey five years you're you're with us we see that you can become a life group leader so we give him the opportunity to be a life group leader and eventually he takes on that role of leadership so again understand this for some of them from to become from a new believer to become a leader some of them can do it in you know they have that ability they just become leaders in two years for some of them it may take five years for others it may take 10 years it's okay right learn to work with people right so for example you know somebody may become a believer and then in two years he's already learned great things like he's learned the whole of paul's first second third missionary journey he's learned um, you know uh, everything all the offerings in the old testament he's he's able to quote scripture he's able to understand the book of romans and uh, you know even tap into the book of revelations he's able to grasp so much in two years but there can be also people who are five years or ten years almost but they're still not yet there in that place. Now, we're not judging them. We're not saying, hey, you know what, this person five years, no. And you are 10 years, you're still trying to figure out, no. Remember that people are different. The Apostle Paul, he had this great revelation, but he wrote so many, you know, so, so many epistles and, and such great revelation he got that Peter is writing in his epistle and saying, like our brother Paul, where some of his writings we don't even understand. It's hard to understand some of his revelations and some of his writings. Now, who has been with Jesus? Peter. Peter is saying, but our brother Paul, Apostle Paul, you know, he's, he's writing some things that we, some of us may find it very hard to understand. It's what? Everyone's journey is different. One person can take two years to learn guitar or any musical instrument. Another person may take five years to learn it. Same chord, same thing, same song. Another person may take six months. Hey, how did you learn this so fast? I don't know. I just practice or... So don't judge people by you know how many years. Let people journey. Let people journey into their role or the position that God has for them in their own time. So you've got these fivefold functions, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. If you know that somebody is going to be, uh, has this pastoral calling on them, don't force them, hey, you're going to become a pastor. No, two years I'm giving you. In two years, you should become a pastor. Now, what is that going to happen? He'll, he'll get worried, first of all, he or she, and then he'll start learning something, and then he that's the wrong way to do it. You give people their time. Right? Help them to step in. Hey, this is I, I feel that this is something God is calling you for. Why don't you why don't you think about it? Pray about it. See if this is where God is leading you. Then uh, many, many students who have been in our Bible college, you know, very clearly I felt God has called them to be an evangelist. I just knew it. So I've shared with them. See, I feel that God is calling you to do this. Think about it, pray about it. And now they're you know evangelizing all across, you know, South India, North India. They keep traveling. And interestingly, I've spoken to some of them. I asked them, how do people call you? You know, I've always wondered. They said, no, people just call. Come and preach. So they go and preach. Right? Uh, they, they, they'll call, come here and preach. Come to this meeting, that meeting. And they go. That's the calling of an evangelist. Many of them, I've, I've felt that they'd be pastors. And now they're pastors. I mean, but we didn't force it on them. You have to become this. No, they prayed about it, thought about it. They had their time and then they journeyed towards that role. But you and I, as leaders, are to encourage it. If I was not given an opportunity to preach or lead the worship, I would have been working in the corporate sector 100%. 100%. Because I knew that I'll finish two years, I'll go back and join the company that I left. I know, I don't know, maybe after that, I would have gone back to maybe leading worship or or maybe i would have been leading worship and i don't know what it is but i would have been sure to be working that's for sure i i can't stay without working so so you know that so you help people transition 
You understand what I'm saying, right? Master, for some of us who are pursuing this course, sorry, right? I, I can't hear you. For some of us who are pursuing this course, yes. right now, so when people are not sure of their calling, yeah, it is actually good to wait on the Lord and to see God. You know that you would speak to us through the word, through pastors, through thing, because our God is a God who actually confirms and again reconfirms, yes. just like how you shared that, how you told people. So just your view on it. Yes. So remember that our gifts and our uh, calling go together. It's like a railway track. Who we are in Christ, that's there, right? They, they go together. So sometimes of God, there are times when God wants you immediately. Right? There are some times that God, you know, makes you wait, prepares you. Now, see, I knew I wanted to do this. I didn't know how, but and I didn't know where also. But I knew that somewhere I want to preach and teach. So not knowing what it is or where it is, but I always, you know, would spend a lot of time in the Word, try to read, try to read books, try to read the Bible, and spend time in the Word and pray. I knew that I'm going to do it in some capacity. I didn't know where, right? So this place gave that opportunity, right? 2010, uh, as a young boy, right? Uh, so. So I feel that, you know, even as we go about doing what we have to do, those opportunities will come. We've got to be faithful, right? Uh, sometimes it's the opportunity will come, you have to pick up, you will you'll have to like, okay, it's already come. Opportunities come and you it's come on your lap. And you got to get up to that level. Right? Uh, or sometimes you work towards getting up to that level and then the opportunity comes. So both ways, right? So, for example, as I was saying this, see, Moses had to wait like 40 years and all that, you know, go through a whole season. Of course, his mistake, but then God prepared him 40 years, 80, saw the burning bush. Here. But Joshua was, was very simple. He just was with Moses. Uh, Moses was saying, go. Okay, Joshua went. Okay, who's next? I'm here next to you. All the while, Joshua was there. Okay, Joshua, take them. It was very like, yeah, it was just, we knew. Even the Israelites knew Joshua. So when they knew that, you know, okay, Joshua is going to take you, they all said, oh, yes, Joshua is our next leader. So sometimes it happens like, but Joshua had to learn, okay, God, Moses went to you. I have to come to you. Right? So he learned on the job. Uh, so, so you help people understand that, right? Okay. A church that is relevant to the world it is in. Now, Let's read this passage, very interesting passage, right? First uh, Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Paul is writing again. He's he's trying to bring out a point here. Right? Let's read that. Anyone? Uh, First Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. Can 23. you read from the book? Because everyone on even in the class can just let's read from the uh, book itself. For though I am free from all men. I have made myself servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win, I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, no being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I become became as weak that I might, might win the week. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Powerful. He says, to the Jew, I'll become a Jew. To the Gentile, I'll become a Gentile. To the weak, to those who are under the law, I'll be under the law. Those who are um, not under the law, I'll not be under the law. To those who are weak, I will become weak. All of this I do, for the sake of the gospel, that I may be partakers with you. So very important lesson to learn from here. As a church, we must be able to be relevant to the, the community that we are ministering to, to the world that we are in. Imagine, just picture this, imagine now 2024, imagine we don't have live stream. Will it be okay? I mean, so, so for example, APC, okay? Imagine we say, okay, close down live stream. Will it make sense if we close it down? 
why yeah we are reaching out to 100 or more than 100 countries online right it makes no sense so for like that i must be as a leader and as a church i must be relevant to the world that i am in right live streaming videos audios um, you know now we have the 5 minute yeah, i think it's 5 minutes um, the short movie movies that we're doing right uh, because now for example if i if somebody sends me a whatsapp first thing i do is i see the timing if it's 8 or 9 minutes i'm not even going to open it I will uh, sometimes I just don't I don't even see it right unless if it's like something really interesting to me I'll if it's three minutes two or three minutes I may watch it now in that two or three minutes the first uh, one minute doesn't make sense I'm going to delete that message that's it okay if it's something about plants and something that has an interest okay I, I'm just going to delete it so if you have to get my attention, it should be the first one minute, especially like for me personally, I, I will not watch a full video. I'm willing to watch a one and see what I do is I when I'm driving, wherever I'm driving, I have full of sermons. Right. So I keep listening to sermons from people all across the world, all kinds of some different kinds. of. So now, you know, while coming, I was listening to so I, I listened to one full sermon. One hour sermon, I reached. Now while going back, I may listen to another sermon from another preacher. So that I don't mind. But if I have to go back and watch something intentionally, it has to catch my attention. Otherwise, I won't watch it. Now that's me, not everyone. Right? So what I'm trying to say is we need to be relevant to the church, to the people that we are ministering to. If it's youth, be relevant to the youth. Don't start off, uh, you know, talking about all unwanted things to the youth. They'll get bored. Teens, be relevant to the teen. They're going for uh, ministering in a college. Don't start a sermon about Moses or Abraham. And Abraham took Isaac to the mountain. Oh man, what will happen? The, the students there will start falling asleep. They'll say, "What is this?" You got to come up with something new. Got to come up with something that's relevant that they can understand and they will like, right? If you're going to, you know, so teach or minister to teachers, I need to know what to speak, right? Again, if I'm going to speak about to the teachers uh, of a certain college, I don't pick up Balaam's prophecy and start talking, or Elijah called fire from him. That's good at a certain place, not now, right? Or I don't pick up Paul's three missionary journeys. This is where Paul went. So as teachers, we all can also do ministry. It's not going to work. I need to be relevant. Understand what I'm doing. Right? Understand what I'm preaching, what I'm teaching. Right? Be relevant. And if we are not relevant, people will not be able to understand what we are communicating. We will be preaching the eternal truth of God's word. But if it is not in the language of the people, they will not understand it. Imagine this. Just think of this. There's a Bible college here. Okay. And for some reason, there are, you know, next semester we have people from France, from, uh, from Italy, Spain. They all come and sat here. Okay. And none of them know English. And I start preaching and teaching in English. Same thing, you know, full fervor, full anointing and all of that. Will it help them? They'll just be looking at me, blank faces. What are you saying? I mean, to see a book, I'm reading from the book only. They look into the book, but they're not able to understand. Why? Because what I'm communicating is not going through them. They're not able to understand the language itself. So how will I be able to communicate uh, you know, if, if in, in terms of communicating, being relevant, I must understand that this is what. So I must be able to relate it that way, right? Uh, being relevant also means to keep changing, being adapting to the seasons that we're living in. Then a church that is raising up leaders, very important. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9. Yes, read. 
Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 and when James, Cephas and John who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace that ha had been given to me they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised okay this point is very 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 important a church that is raising up leaders now Paul is writing it to the Galatians. He says, James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars. Pillars of what? Christianity at that time. Now, look at a building. What if there is no pillars? You can build, okay, so for example, this, this whole structure is here. It's two floors. We can build. But imagine this, this two flows didn't have pillars. What would have happened? Yes? First, what are the signs? Cracks. Then, after cracks, the lights, one light will fall off. Then one of the, you know, the cracks go deeper, deeper, deeper. And it's just going to fall off. But can you build without pillars? Yes or no? You can build without pillars. It may not last. You may do housewarming, house dedication, all of that. But it's not going to last. You've got to have pillars. Pillars are what keeps your building strong. And here, leaders are the pillars of the house of God. If Imagine this whole building had one pillar. And there in that corner there, hey, this is the important spot. So one pillar there. And you build the same structure. Will it help? Will that one pillar be able to handle the whole load here? No. You need, okay, one, two, three, at least four pillars on that side and six pillars on this side. At least, minimum. You know, if you ask architects and people who build more the pillars, better. You know, but sometimes people reduce the pillars because they're expensive. Here, pillars leaders are the pillars in the church and we have to be able to raise up leaders who can build a church we must raise good leaders take time to raise leaders trust your leaders don't be insecure you know, the, here's the thing you know sometimes the leaders may be better than those who raised you up as a leader you get what i'm saying yeah so sometimes we raise up a leader and this young boy grows up, becomes really intellectually very good, very good in preaching, teaching. He has a gift of healing or prophecies and all of this prophetic gift. And, and now he's preaching. Everyone wants him. But who's the leader of the church? Somebody else. What happens? They become insecure. So as leaders, we must never become insecure. Provide room for opportunities. Be willing to see others rise. You should be willing to let go of certain responsibilities and area of work that we have. Hand it over to them. Say, hey, these are the things I did. You take it up. And you. And now when that person comes and he may, he or she may, you know, add things to it, remove things to it, what they may feel good for the ministry as they are leading, right? We should keep a watch over our leaders, be patient with them, correct them lovingly, Cheer them on to grow. Very important. Being patient with them. Will they make mistakes? Yes. Correct them. But continue to give them opportunities. Now, in a, in a time that we are living in, sometimes, you know, um, I'm not saying everywhere. What, what happens is we, we give opportunities, and the, uh, the moment a person makes a mistake, we, you know, we disqualify them. Oh, man. He's not, maybe he's not good enough. Maybe he needs some more time. Now, depends on what mistake, right? It shouldn't be a critical mistake, right? In terms of character, integrity, then it's critical. But it's something like, you know, small things. We, we disqualify them. No, we should always give opportunities for people to grow, right? Watch over them, correct their mistakes. Then there will be times when there will be heartaches. Now, in terms of raising up leaders, Many of you have asked this, right? You've taken a young boy you or girl and you've raised them up. They become good leaders, good preachers, good teachers. 
suddenly they say, I want to go plant my own church. Now the pastor is sitting and crying. I spent 10 years on this fellow. Now he's gone. There's nothing to cry there. You should be happy, bless them, send them on their way. Go do what you have to do. Do what God has called you to do. That is being kingdom minded. When you should be sad, you know, when you raise up a leader, they come to a certain position and they say, no, I don't like God. I don't want ministry. Then you be sad. Say, God, what is this? You know, you can pray and ask. But if they say, I want to go and start a church, bless them and send them. So go do what you have to do. Go fulfill the call of God upon your life. Right? The more the leaders, the more a local church has leaders, the stronger it will be. The more leaders of a local church has, the more it is able to do as a body. The more the leaders, the stronger the body will be. The more the leaders, the more we can do as a church. Now, again, remember the process. We went through the stages, right? Pioneering stage, building stage, organizational stage, apostolic stage, right? Pastoral stage. Apostol so at what stage you are in, you make the decisions. Now, when you're 50 people, don't say, I need three associate pastors. What will they do? Nothing they'll do. When you're 100 people, you can think, okay, maybe one associate pastor is needed, but not if you feel you can wait, okay, wait. So you think of what stage you're in. But in the meanwhile, you keep raising up leaders. They could be volunteer leaders as well. Right? Okay. A church that is able to establish continuity. Very important. Let's read 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Yes. These things which you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men or women who will be able to teach it also. Now, remember. There will come a time as a senior leader or a pastor, you will, you and I, we will have to move on. We are not here forever. Yes or no? There will come a time you will have to move on. So what do we do at APC? So, for example, the senior leader is in a certain position, certain place, right? So we raise up people who are leaders in their 20s, Maybe four or five leaders in their 20s, 30s, four or five leaders, 40s, maybe four or five leaders. So what are you doing? You, you are establishing continuity. So if I'm not there as a leader, this person is ready to take over. Now, when he is time, maybe he has another 10 years, the person after me, he should be able to raise up another person who is in their early 30s, who has another 10 years at least, 10 or 20 years. So if a person is in his 30s, he has at least a good 20 to 25 years of ministry or, or leadership. Now that person must be able to raise up somebody who are in their 20s. So that person, the person who's in their 20s will have a good you know, 30 to 35 years in, in leadership. So the point is what? We got to keep the baton moving like a relay. It needs to go on and on. I must be able to raise up leaders. Those leaders must be able to raise up other leaders. So that way, continuity happens. So for example, example, if all of us in our pastoral team, example, right? All of us in the pastoral team take a break for three months. Will ministry continue? No. I think it will. I think it will. You know why? We have people who can preach on all locations on Sunday. Right? I'm talking about ministry, right? Organization, you forget. that is another story. Ministry, the church. We have people who can preach good sermons. All five locations. Okay. What about Bible college? We have people who can come and teach in the Bible college. Only thing is availability. 
you know, coming and teaching, but we can make it happen. So you get what I'm saying. Even if all of us in the pastoral team are not there, I believe that everything will function normally. Everything will continue. Right? And this is the right way to function. So even the next generation, they must get to know that, hey, when the time when we are moving out, we should be able to raise up the next generation of people. That is establishing continuity. It's not like you, OK, I finished my 30 years of ministry. And now you all do what you want. I finished 30, 40 years. God, I've been faithful to what God has told me to do. I planted the church. The church has grown. And this is whatever. No. I must be able to ensure continuity. Right? Uh, then next one. OK, yeah, I think we come to an end there. So we see the example in the book of Joshua as well, right? Uh, Joshua chapter two. So uh, you know Moses is Moses is dead, and so Joshua, son of Nun, takes on the responsibility, establishes continuity, takes the people of Israel into the promised land. One good way to do this, one of the ways to establish continuity is one is you teach them, right? So for example, right as as Teachers in the Bible college will tell our, you know, somebody's covering for me. See, this is a, you know, timetable. These are the portions. This is the course material. Make sure you're on time. These are the things that you have to do. Uh, record everything. This is how it is. Done. We have to tell them. Secondly, we also tell them, hey, all our teachings are recorded. So you can go back, listen to it. If you want to use examples, you want to learn from it, you can learn from it. So some of the things that I personally do is I listen to a lot of recordings, some of our own teachings, right? Sunday sermons. I keep listening to it two, three times. Right? So yesterday's sermon, already two times I've listened to it fully. Start the beginning. I'll probably listen to it two, three more times. So I really get used to it. Okay, Daniel, Revelation. Because these are, you know, it's not going to be something that you'll just grasp immediately. So you tell the next generation, hey, this is available. Now with media, everything's available. Go ahead, learn from them. OK? Any questions? Shall we go to the next chapter? No questions? Yes. I just wanted to know, uh, in your life, any, have you made any wrong decision during uh, uh, raising up leaders? OK. Any wrong decisions while raising up leaders? Um, yes, there will be times. See, we, we don't judge a person and say, OK, you're, you're not able to do this, and or you're able to do Because see, for example, if a person doesn't know about worship or is not strong in worship i won't choose him as a worship pastor simple right i gotta think about it okay he's not in that so let's give him another opportunity uh so i see what is his gifts and what is the talent that or what is the grace that god has given in his life but there are times when you know uh, we can appoint somebody Right, and we've appointed them. They have the gift, they have the talent, but character-wise, they are not right. Or in in terms of integrity, their character is not right. So we've asked people to step down at times. That's a hard thing to do, but we have done it. And even if it's like volunteer teams, we've asked them to step down. Right? Because character is is more important than your gifts. Gifts can be achieved. Right. Talent can be, see, for example, preaching. You preach now. You start preaching now. Five years down the line, you will be better. Right? You practice, you learn, you learn from your mistakes, you will be better. But character is something that we really need to work on. We can either go, if a character is not changed, it will just, I'm, I'm sure you've heard that saying, right? The gifts and talents can take you up the ladder to high positions. What's your character that keeps you there? No character, you'll tumble and fall down. So yes, there will be times we've 
we we make decisions uh, we may choose people uh but then it's okay right we're, what we are doing is we're also saying okay god you know god understands right? okay that uh, you know see sometimes we, we give people opportunities and they don't they take advantage of it right? so for example uh, i'll just use this example many years ago uh there was a leader that we raised up many years. I'm talking about 2011. Uh, uh, we raised up a leader, but this guy is a very talented person, right? He was in worship and was able to, you know, form teams. Very good. But we got to know that he was asking people money in the church. Slowly we got to know that. He's asking people, different, different people, he's asking money. And we got to know. After many months, we got to know. So this is character issue. So we told him, number one, you're out of the leadership team. You're not, and two is you have to give back all the money that you took from everyone. Hard decision had to be done. Right. Yeah. Um, Pastor, how can we start church in a place where uh, other faiths are very much and yeah. there is uh, nothing who can support you and uh, how can we start and another and another thing is if there is lack of money how can we start church without okay first let me answer your second question lack of money how to start we talked about it uh, work plan right we talked about that you know plan financially plan to save up money have enough funds for your family if you're single not much but uh, if you have a family, take time, save up money, ask God to open right doors. Right. So, for example, we talked about this, right? You save up to hire a hall, music system, all of it. You should have the funds. So, don't just jump into it saying God has called me. Right? Plan financially, right? So that's one. Two is yeah. See, if, especially if places in North India, it's not easy because we know that everywhere there are people from other faiths so you one of the things you can do is you can you know you start small right you say god give me the right opportunity a right door that you can open it can be in somebody's house right and i love this verse in the bible i forget where it is it says do not despise small beginnings meager beginnings right uh, so when you start off small don't despise it now, the problem is sometimes we see the big church, we see the big screens and the big, you know, churches and all of this, and we we can easily get entrapped in all of it. But remember, all these big churches, even if it's 10,000, 15,000 people, they would have started small. Right? So don't don't be afraid to start small, right? Now, the moment you start, especially where you know there's religious intolerance, you really need to tap into God's wisdom on how to do ministry, right? Now, it's it may not be as easy as in a city like Bangalore. Uh, North, it may be very difficult. So you ask God for wisdom. God, give me ideas how I can reach out. That's where you tap into the work of the Holy Spirit. And he may give you ideas. He may give you strategies that you will never have thought of. Pastor, uh, can I know how APC started ministry in Varanasi? Because that also the place yeah sure so so what happened was i think it was see pastors books go everywhere all across north india and so uh people used to call him for conferences and events and all that so in the year from what i know i think it was year 2012 that we went for a conference first right uh we went for a conference uh, it was a one side it was a kingdom builders conference and for the youth it was foundations right and then many people came. Now, the best part is, I remember that conference because many people didn't know who's Ashish Raichur. I mean, they didn't know who the pastor is. But they know the book. We got your book. We heard that this conference is happening. So they came. And now when they came, uh, you know, we got connected to one of the pastors who translated for us. Right, the conference he translated now after that because he's translation translating the kingdom builders he really liked it and so he's like a pastor and a minister there he said i will arrange for a place 
I will arrange for the people also to come. You come to Varanasi and do a two months or a three months course. All you have to do is bring your staff and you teach. What you've taught us in this conference, we, you may have different topics you choose. So we sent him, OK, these are the number of topics that we have. We chose it. And he said, yeah, you come. So that was the first Bible college, two months Bible college that happened in 2012 in Varanasi. That's how it happened. He was translating for pastor. And then from there, it just picked up. So some of the students who came, they said, they said we wanted to start a church. So we helped them start a church. We want, they wanted to start a ministry. We helped them start a ministry. So it just worked out that way. Right? Anything else? Pastor, while uh, making strong the local church, so if the church is new, so what should we do to make strong the church first? Like uh, be, many people choose to pray more and more, mm. worship more and more, then later they miss go slow for uh, prayer and this. But mm. for mm. but for first time they used to do just this more yeah. and more. So is there any limit or? Should we keep any uh, order, anything, something? No. So see, we, we learned right in the previous chapter, we should have a balance of the word and the spirit. So especially when a church, local church is started, it's the initial phase. So as a pastor or a leader, you will have to put in a lot of hours. Right? There will be a lot of sacrifice for you. right? You will have to pray. You will have to tap into God. Uh, the initial stages, right? And as a church, maybe there are 15, 20 people. As a church, you begin to teach them, okay, word, the spirit, importance of prayer, all of this. Now, normally, when a church has just started, they are full of, you know, energy and vibrant. It, you know, they want to see this thing. This is where, as a leader, you come in. You, you, you started. You encourage people who are, you know. Uh, who are excited and want to do, you encourage them, but you also ensure continuity, like what we talked about the last point. So this Bible college, for example, Bible college started 2005. From 2005, we are teaching. Now, there are many, many semesters. We had two people sitting. Some semesters, we didn't have anyone. So we had to move, we had to just, skip the student, push the students. To so all these things have happened, right? But we ensure continuity, say, say, no, it's OK. It's just a time. We will move on. We will press on. So as a church, you may be praying, God, give us 100 people. But there's no 100 people. We are still stuck in 30 people, right? Don't give up there. You got to, as a leader, you, that's where you come in. Say, it's OK. Let's raise up leaders. Let's push for it. Let's do what we have to do. Word, spirit, practical things, evangelism, meetings, everything. And expect God to work. Right? So see, it's very easy for that fire to burn out. But you have that vision in your heart. You should not let it burn it out. Because you are the leader who will influence the rest of the church. Right? If the fire has gone out in me, I cannot spark the other person. Yes or no, right? So as a leader, I must stay tuned. I must believe God. I must trust God that God is working. That the church will maybe discourage. Hey, Pastor, what is this? We are praying for two years. We are still at 30 people. Then what should I what should we do? Now there are two responses. As a leader, if I say, Yeah, because we are not doing this, we are not praying enough, we are not preaching enough, we are not giving to the church enough, we are not doing evangelism as well. If I say it that way, what will happen? They'll be even more discouraged, the congregation. But as a leader, if I say, it's all right. It's been five, what three years. We are 30 people. It's all right. Let's continue to look at, you know, we are able to raise up some leaders. Let's push on. We have time. We can do it. You know, let's start something new. Like, let's start a worship evening. Let's start a weekend school. Let's start something. Let's try something new. So what you're doing is, you're fanning the flame. You're saying, hey, don't give up. God, it is, this is God's vision, not my vision. So that's where, as a leader, you begin to influence the people. 
right now for you not to be discouraged as a leader you have to go back to the prayer closet you have to go back in prayer you have to spend time in god's presence right so a lot depends on the leader right and then you celebrate people's success you celebrate uh, you know when things are when things are working out as a church continue to encourage people to participate in prayer and worship and all of that and as we do that you know the the congregation will, will understand hey even though we are not seeing the change pastor is still continuing so we have to stand with him we have to be with him so you're setting the example always remember people will remember what you do than what you preach you may preach 1000 sermons they may remember one or two sermons but they will remember what you did 15 years back i remember what some of our pastors have done 10 15 years back i remember it's like a picture in my mind and it's still like you know impacting but i may not remember all their sermons you get it right so so this is something that it's it's our responsibility as leaders and we will learn as we do it right okay so we'll stop here we'll get into chapter 6 next class onwards um and we look at church growth principles from uh next monday onwards uh, we'll stop here let's just close with a word of prayer okay Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to study and learn your word. Lord, even as we've learned about the local church, Lord, uh, and so many things that are involved, Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for trusting us, Lord, to build your kingdom. And I pray, God, that you will, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gifts and the grace that you have given us, Lord. We pray that we will begin to use it and and raise us up as leaders for your kingdom oh god we commit each one of us into your hands in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you everyone i'll see you next hour for the other course god bless